Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to some Crafting with Kathy. In today's clip, we're going to play around with the close-up lady stamp of Miranda and it's going to be some Christmas Mirandas. So a couple of cards showing Miranda in a Christmas festive mood. So starting off, I'm going to be, we've got our Miranda stamp and I'm going to also be using some of the Beati Boho Mandala stencil. Our inks are going to be mainly the Versa Magic. So we've got some different colors. We're using a few different colors for foundation colors today. I'm going to focus on Magnolia Bud and a bit of Sierra Vista. Now these are two colors that only come as the large size of the pad. They don't come in the dew drops, but we do have them on the website in the larger size. We'll also, um, because I'm doing two cards, it'll be different colors on each card. We're also going to be using some of the Christmas Red and the Golden Rod Stickles and some of the new Stickles Glitter Gel and this one is the Supernova. Okay, so let's get playing. I've already got Miranda stamped out ready to save us a little bit of time. Um, so I'm going to start off with putting on her foundation. So I'm just going to, to do this quickly, I'm just going to do it by putting a mask. This is a reverse mask where I've already stamped her and cut the shape out so that I can then just place it over the top of her and colour in nice and easily without going outside my edges. So I'm going to use Magnolia Bud as the basic foundation colour, which is a lovely peachy tone. Just grab a brush for that. Remember, off on your scrap once first. And then you can go from the scrap paper in and you get a lovely soft finish. So this is just to give a slightly different tonings to my usual colours for foundation are Sahara Sand or Wheat. And this gives her a little bit more golden hue. And remember, when you're putting on the foundation, it often really doesn't look like you've got anything on there. If you just lift the card away, you'll see you've actually got quite good coverage. So that's plenty there. I might just do her, no, I'll come back and do it her hair in a moment. We'll do her blush and stuff first. So I'm going, that's where I'm going to bring in the Sierra Vista to do her blush. Now let's grab that one. So it's a nice peachy colour. And I'll switch to a slightly smaller brush. So this is the number eight size brush. And again, if I'm wanting to make life easy for myself, I can leave the mask in place. And we just pick up some colour just on the very end of the brush, touch a bit off on our scrap, and then swirl in on her cheek there. If I'm wanting her to have more dramatic cheekbones, uh, I can actually put the brush sort of slightly on its side and wiggle it in and it will give a bit more definite line, but I'm actually just happy to leave her nice and soft for this one. We might add a little bit of warmth just around the top of her forehead there. And we're also going to add some across her eye area. So just the, um, just under, oh, well, it's the eye area. It's between the eyelid and the brow line. Okay. Just get a little bit of a grot off there. So that gives us a lovely soft basis there. And because I'm going to be playing around, I might not do a lot more with her colour there. Well, let's get her hair on. So with the hair, again, you can make a base mask where I've stamped her face and just cut the hair out. So this can make it a bit quicker and easier. I'll show you two ways of doing the hair. And let's just grab some gingerbread maybe. Let's go gingerbread for her hair. So there's two ways of doing it. Either I can um, put the mask in place. And just swirl over with the brush. That, and that's going to be a very quick way of putting color on for her hair. Or I can just, notice so I'm just tapping off on the scraps. So I haven't got too much color on there. Swirl it on and then push my brush down and that means I can get a nice edge to the brush that will get up to all those lines without going outside the edges. And this way you can actually get a little bit softer in around where the hair meets the skin. 
rather than it being such a, a hard edge that you get with the having the mask in place. But it's really up to you. I think a little bit of both can work really well because it means that you can get some quick, accurate placement of colour to start with. So we just swirl on there. And then lift the mask away and come in with the brush and just soften edges if we need to. Now we can also come in with some of our brush markers and add some more depth to the hair. But let's have a look and see how we go with everything else I want to do to this card and see whether we need it. Right, now we're going to create a backing card to go with it. And what I want to do for this is use the Stickles Glitter Gel, which is beautiful for using through stencils. But you do need a fairly... Um, you don't want too fine lines for it because the glitter is quite chunky. Let me show you. Let's get Matthew to show you a nice close up of this glitter gel. So it's got not just glitter, but it's got little stars and dots and things like that in it. So it's chunky. It needs a little bit of area to show that off to its best. And we apply it with a just a spatula tool. Um, and I've already done it on a base card here. Um, and I've used just the dots out of the Boho Mandala stencil. So I'll just show a bit on the scrap, but I got that one ready first so it's had plenty of time to dry before we start doing some of the background effects. So laying our stencil down, I found the, the design part of the stencil too fine for this type of glitter. What works better is just the dotty border. So we just pick up some of our glitter gel and wipe it, holding the stencil flat to the card. You could also tape it down and just work it back and forward a bit until you've got through the bits of your stencil. And you'll find you'll be to, on the stencil, scrape off any excess and place it into areas where you want to have colour. So you're not wasting it on the stencil there. You can also, once you finish, scrape off some of that excess and put it back in your jar as well. But this glitter is just gorgeous with all these extra little bits and pieces to it. Now let me peel that off and you'll see we've got this beautiful extra chunky glitter. So that's fantastic doing that through the stencil. As I said though, I've already done it on our card so that it's had plenty of time to dry because I want to do some inking around it. So let me just take off any excess, pop it back in my jar. I will give that stencil a good wash. Um, just usually just a bit of water and a, a brush should do it. Or you could actually use a little bit of liquid hand soap if you need to, to give it a good clean. Right, so let's go back to, let's have a play with our background. So I'm going to get some Jumbo Java And I'll grab a big brush for Jumbo Java. So this is a number 10 size brush. Pick up some colour and actually just shade it around the card. Now I do need it reasonably heavy because I'm using the cotton blend uh, for my Miranda panel and just using the um, House of Paper White for my backing card, which is a nice 300 GSM card, but I actually don't want it looking too white compared with the creamy look of the cotton blend. Of course, you could use cotton blend for your backing card as well, but often we want to keep our uh, more expensive card just for uh, the, our accent pieces and use either something like the House of Paper White or our White Leather Grain card as our backing cards. So you can just colour that with your inks then to make it tone in with the card front that you've created. Let's shade it all the way around and I'm going to give it a bit of a quick buff just to take any ink off the um, the glittery parts because we really want to see that shine. I don't want this, I'm wanting the inks to colour the background card not to actually take away from our lovely glitter. So let me just grab my rag here and just give that a bit of a buff. Hopefully without actually lifting off too many bits of glitter. 
learning a very important lesson here that I actually would have been better to have done my colouring and then done my glitter over the top. I won't stop to change that now. It's still looking nice and shiny. I'm not going to stop and change it because I still I'd need to give it time to dry. But that is a lesson in the future is to put the colour the card first and then put our glitter over the top because I have lost a little bit of my shine there. Okay. Let's do a little bit of shading around this panel as well. And then we're going to do some with our stencil too. Still using the Jumbo Java ink. Now to do this, I'm actually going to use another mask of Miranda. This is one just done on a post-it note. So this way I'm not going to get the stencil over her face by mistake. Need to make a little bit more space there. So I'm just going to see what part of the pattern of the stencil I want to see. And I think I'd like some of those dots down the edge to echo the dots that we've, we've done with our backing. So pick up some Jumbo Java and just circle that through the stencil. I'm a horror for not actually stopping and taking the time to tape down my stencils. Or I've, I could also put it onto the Wendy Vecchi Stay Station with some magnets on it. But as I said, I'm a bit of a horror just for grabbing it and just holding it in place and going for it. <laughs> does mean it's a little bit tricky if I want to see what I've been doing but I can still do that let's just hold everything firm and just lift up and I can see I've got that pattern happening which is fabulous now down on her neck I'm actually wanting the stencil pattern to come over the edge of her neck a bit so I can lift off my mask and position this part of the design until it's coming over the corner and up her neck Hold it in place and dust on some colour. Again, if you're not sure, just lift your stencil up and you can see how much colour has come through. If you're wanting it stronger, do more of a stippling. That is what I wanted. Cool. Now let's just add a little bit more of our Jumbo Java around the edge here. Okay. Now I'm going to keep, now what I would normally do now would be to stick this to my base card, but I'm actually going to just keep playing rather than you taking time to watch me sticking down a card, which I'm sure you know how to stick two bits of card down. So let's just keep playing with this so that we get time to do our two cards. So I'm going to add some bright red lips for her. So I'm using one of our Pentel brush markers. And I'm going to put some red glitter over the top of this. So I'm not going to do any nice delicate shading as I often do to add some highlights and shadows to the lips. Just putting on a red base coat basically. And I also want to do a Christmas bow in her hair. And for this I don't have a stamp so I'm just going to draw it and hope that it works out okay. So we're going to have a centre to it here. And I don't mind that I've got... Um, the lines of her hair showing through it because we're going to put the red glitter over the top. So with a circle and then we come out from the circle with the bow shape. Out that side with the bow shape. And then we'll do some ribbons and this is where the pens, these pens you can go from a fine line 
thank you thanks Matthew fine line if you put pressure on you'll get a thick line and then you can lift off and you'll go finer again so as we do our ribbons coming down from the the bow we can put some more pressure on the pen and get a wider line and then lift up off and it will naturally go finer now let, let, let's let that just dry a little bit and have a play with her eyes so with her eyes I want to add in some extra brown so that we'll go with the Jumbo Java again I'm just going to pick up a little eyeshadow applicator this one that I've had brown on before just a little bit on the very end of the applicator and we're going to pop that in near her eyelashes and just smudge it up on both sides and I'm also going to do a little bit underneath her eyes so without adding any extra ink to the applicator I can just smudge a little bit of smoky colour underneath her eyes there and we'll come in with a little bit more of the Sierra Vista I think I'm just going to switch to a little brush for this. Let's just add a bit more Sierra Vista. Again, just tap off on my scrap paper so I haven't got it too intense as I go in. And let's just shade a bit of that around there too. Oh, she's looking pretty, isn't she? Now let's pop lids on those before I go and stick my elbow or something into them. So it is a good idea to put your lids on your ink pads when you're working with them. It stops the ink when you, well, once you've finished working with them. It stops the inks drying out, but also invariably, if you leave an ink pad sitting around with a lid off it, you're going to put your arm or your hand into it and then smear it across your work, usually when your work's looking really good. So double reason to actually just pop your lids on when you're finished. Right, let's get in here with some glitter. Now I'm actually going to put in a little bit of the glitter gel first if I can see what I've done with my little spatula which I've tucked to one side once I finish using it there it is so I want some of this to the center of that bow and I want one of these gorgeous stars in there so let's just pop that right chunky in the middle there oh it's gorgeous isn't it so you can just use it directly but it's not for fine work, like when we're using it with our, our normal stickles with the fine nozzle, you can get more accurate placement of it, whereas the glitter gel is designed more for bigger areas. Okay, let's get some, let's get our glitter running first, that's better. So by the time we've got this on quite thick, we're not going to see those hairlines underneath. but I did want to put it on with the pen first. <laughs> I didn't trust myself just to draw it directly from the stickles bottle. And now we'll just follow down the ribbons. That looks so Christmassy, doesn't it, with the red and gold? Oh. <laughs> now, a little bit on her lips. And here, I don't want as heavy as the bow, so we're just putting a little bit on and then using the nozzle just to spread it out a little bit. So definitely, we did need our red base to the lips there. And we definitely need some gold on her eyes. And maybe some gold through her hair. We could also do some lovely ax 
accent spots of sparkles just on her cheeks. We could do highlight her earring with the gold. Now the earring in the Miranda set, the earring comes as a separate piece. So you don't have to have her with the earring, but you can add it in if you want to. We'll just do a couple little dots over this side. That to me is Christmas. Let's just layer it on the backing card so you can get to have a bit of a look at it. That's really pretty. So that's combining the glitter gel and the Stickles glitter, standard glitter glue. Awesome, okay. Now hopefully we've got time still, Matthew, have we to do our second card? So here again, I've pre-stamped Miranda and I've also pre-stamped and embossed some snowflakes in white. So here we're going to pick on Miranda with a bit of face painting again. If anyone who's watched me at shows knows that I love to do, uh, I do do face painting, um, but I love to use Miranda for doing some face painting. So let's give her some foundation. This time I'm going to use wheat because I want it to be quite soft. Where's my stencil? I think I've dropped, oh there it is. Okay, pop the stencil over her and color on with some wheat. So what I'm doing to Miranda for this one is I'm going to make her look a little bit like, well, not a little bit like, I'm gonna give her deer face painting. Christmas reindeers. And then we're going to do a deep blue background so a little bit of colour there. And I'm not going to add any blush because now we're going to add our colours for the deer. So I'm going to use gingerbread and we might come in with a bit of... No, let's start with Sahara sand. Let's go soft first and then we'll come in with some stronger colours. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of some of my makeup brushes for this. So let's just pick up a little bit of colour there. And we want it around her hairline. and across the cheeks. Across her cheeks. I will pop the mask back in because getting the other cheek can be a bit tricky. It's easy where you can hide it into the hairline but when it would be appearing on my outer card, I actually need that little bit of a mask in there. I'm hoping I'm not blocking that with my hands at all. Now we also want some colour. Put a little bit just down her neck. We also want some colour on her eyes. Actually, I'm going to go to a smaller brush for that because I don't want colour right up to her eyebrows. I want it more just around her actual eyelid area. So I'm placing the colour on and just using the brush just to buff it up a little bit. Let's do some on the other side. Now, with much less colour on the brush, I'm actually wanting to shade down her nose. Because we want her nose to look long and thin. Let's just turn the card around slightly so that I can get the brush into the other side of her nose. So you notice I didn't re-ink the brush. Uh, it's more controllable if I haven't got too much ink onto it. So we're not going for a human look here. So we can actually make our makeup a lot stronger than what we would normally to create that so by doing this shadow effect, we're creating a highlight there. 
Okay, let's actually come in now with a little bit of that was Sahara sand. Let's come in with some gingerbread and we'll do her hair as well as doing a little bit more of that contouring. No, I lied. I'm going to do her hair with Jumbo Java because I want it to look different to the gingerbread. So let's get our Jumbo Java brush. And I'm using the mask because I want to get this on fairly quickly. Excellent. Okay, back to gingerbread. And let's come in with our soft round brush and just take a little bit of colour off. Doesn't do to get too excited and come in too heavy. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm actually going to do her lips in the same colour. So I'm just going to get one of my normal number two filbert brushes. Instead of doing her lips with the normal brush markers, because I want it looking very soft and very matte, we'll just pop on a little bit of, like a dusting of colour. Okay. Now the tricky bit, this is where I could really muck it up. I'm going to get my Pentel black brush marker. This is one that dries to a fairly waterproof finish. And again, it can go a fine line or you can go heavier and make a heavier line. And we're going to give her a little deer nose. So we're just going to do a little line. So there. So I'm just going to turn the card around so I can get the point of the brush to make the shape that I want to make. He's just having a bit of a look at that. I've just got to grab my white Posca pen, which I think I've left popped away in a different tub. There it is. And this is, well, is how we'll add the little um, freckly shape. Actually, no, because that'll take a minute to dry. Let me just pop a mask over her and do her background colour first, and then we'll come in with the Posca pen. So I've got three shades. Let's move these colours out. We've got three shades in our Versa Magic in the blue tones. And I'm going to cover Miranda with a mask that covers all of her. And start off with the softer blue and then work through to the deeper blues. So we'll start with our sea breeze. And I can start on the mask and just work out from that. And where I've done the white embossing, that will actually resist these inks. And it will start, as we start getting more colour on, that embossing will stand out, which will look great. Okay, 
Okay, now I'll switch to the Aegean, Aegean blue, oh no, yes, Aegean blue. And we'll work in from the sides and work it into that lighter blue. Oh, you can see that embossing starting to pop. It's quite a workout when you're trying to rush it. <laughs> a little bit easier if you can take your time with it. Okay, let's work it in there. Now I will need to move the mask when I get down to her lower neck area because the mask is actually longer than her because it was made for um, a different technique. I've actually made the mask a little bit longer. So I'll just have to lift that out of the way while I get some blue nice and close. Let's just switch back to the sea breeze for a moment. So I'm just buffing off some of that deeper color. I don't have a brush of these for every color. Um, I have one for color families. So I have one for light blues and one for dark blues. So let's just come in with our lighter blue again and just come in closer to her neck. And then we can switch to the Aegean blue and get around the outer edge. And then we're just gonna come in with some of the night sky and really deepen off that outer edge. I felt the blues would make, it make a really nice contrast to the soft browns that we've done the makeup in. Let's just put lids on those ones and bring in the night sky, which is our really deep blue. So this time I will switch to a darker blue brush. Just wiping my hands so I'm not putting fingerprints where we don't want them. And let's shade that one around the edge. Then I'll give the, uh, the uh, white embossing a little bit of a buff off. Now, of course, being because I'm using the chalk inks, our background is softer than what it, and more muted than what it would be if I'd switched to using some dye inks. Nothing wrong with doing either. We could have easily switched to our Collider Colors or our Catherine Puller dye inks, and that would be fine. Um, I just wanted to stick with the chalks today. But it does give you a more muted background. Okay, let's pop the lid on that one. Make sure I've wiped my hands and I'll get my little rag and just buff off those snowflakes. And you'll see them stand out from the inks and create that fantastic resist. And the one just down in the corner there. Awesome. Now, not gonna do glitter on this one going to leave the snowflakes and we'll just go do the Posca pen for some little deer freckles. So I'll just make sure on my scrap that that's working. Give it a little bit of a, a pump a couple of times, make sure we've got white coming through. And then so very light pressure if I want a small dot or slightly more if I want a bigger one. But do be careful because too much pressure and you'll get a really big dot. And we'll do some around on the hairline as well. Try not to do a straight line. Try and make it uh, your lines uneven. Oh, that's very pretty. I think the hardest bit's the nose. <laughs> and the most nerve-wracking bit to do. So I'm just going to get both of those cards and we'll just scrap, or clear all the waste this out of the way and put both of our cards on the black tablecloth there so Matthew can get a nice close-up shot of two very different Christmassy looks for Miranda. Oh, I, I like both of them, but you can see what a difference it makes with where you put your shading, how much you can change the shape of a face and create something else with it. So I hope you have some fun with Miranda. I hope you can make some fantastic Christmas cards. And we will see you next time for some more Crafting with Kathy.